everyone and welcome back to my virtual classroom for our science discovery episode today we will be talking about stoichiometry yes stoichiometry <laughs> yes it's a chemistry um, topic and I hope that you would learn something new today and for those that are new to my class please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today and as always before we start and learn about psychometry as teacher Maria would always say please do live your life to the fullest learn something new every day and love one another as how our God loves us so hope you would enjoy this episode and so let's get started in this video, we will be covering stoichiometry for moles, molar mass, and Avogadro's number. Now first, here are the key terms. What is a mole? A mole is just a number of things. So one mole is equivalent to 6.022141 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 is actually what we call our Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is actually the number of atoms or the number of molecules per mole. So what is a mole? A mole is just a number of things. For example, one dozen is 12 things. One pair is two things. Therefore, one mole will be 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms. Molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of that substance. By definition, that means one mole of a substance with a unit of gram per mole. The molar mass of an element is the mass number for the element that we find on the periodic table. The formula weight, or we commonly call AMU, will be the same number as the molar mass. How about mass? Mass is just the amount of a substance. Therefore, the unit will be in grams. Now, how do we solve mass, moles, or your atomic mass. By doing a triangular form, moles here would actually be multiplied to your atomic mass and the one on top will be divided with the one below. So for this case, if I wanted moles, moles would be mass over atomic mass or molar mass. And if I wanted the atomic mass or my formula mass, molar mass would be equal to mass, which is the one on top, divided by moles. What if I wanted to solve for the mass? So therefore, mass would be, this will be multiplied, moles times the molar mass. Now for your Avogadro's number, so since your Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules, or it could be in atoms per mole, therefore, we could actually divide the whole thing by atoms or molecules to find the number of moles. Now let's try a few examples. So in these examples, we have to calculate the molar mass of the following. So first we have to do KOH. So K, so what you need is your periodic table to find the molar mass or the atomic mass number. So K will be 39.1. By the way, if there are no subscript, that means that there's only one of that element. Oxygen will be 16.0 and hydrogen will be one. So 39.1 plus 16 plus 1 will give us 56.1 grams per mole. So therefore, KOH molar mass would be 56.1 grams per mole. The next example, we have CCl2F2. Now again, the subscript would tell you how many of that element are being used in the compound. So for carbon, we have 1. For chlorine, we have 2. And for fluorine, we have 2. So carbon will have 12. Chlorine will have 2 times 35.5. And fluorine will have 2 times 19. 
and then we add them all together 2 plus 2 times 35.5 is 71 2 times 19 will be 38 which is a total of 121 therefore ccl to f2 have a molar mass of 121 grams per mole next example we have mg OH and then there is a parenthesis and below it is a 2. Now it will be the same with mats. If there is a parenthesis that means we have to multiply the number outside of the parenthesis. So the same with this one. We just need to multiply 2 with a subscript of oxygen and 2 with a subscript of hydrogen. Again if there are no subscripts that means it's considered to be only 1. So therefore mg here is 1 only. So in the periodic table, Mg is 24.3 grams per mole. Oxygen here will be 2 of it times 16. And hydrogen will be 2 of it times 1. So 24.3 plus this will be 32 plus 2 would give us the molar mass of MgOH2 which is equal to 58.3 grams Per mole. Now the last example we have CH3 COOH. Now when we do molar mass for this all we have to do is count again the number of elements that can be found that are the same. So you have carbon and carbon here that means there are two carbons so 2 times 12 that will be 24 and then your hydrogen is 3 plus 1 here therefore hydrogen is a total of 4 times 1 that will be 4 and of course, our oxygen will be 1 and 2, so 2 times 16, that will be 32. So 24 plus 4 plus 32 will be the molar mass for CH3COOH, which is 60 grams per mole. Now let's take another example. How many grams are in 88.1 moles of magnesium? So the first thing that you have to do is check what is the molar mass of magnesium in the periodic table. Magnesium has 24.3 grams per mole. Therefore, to find the mass, mass would be equal to the number of moles, which is 88.1 moles, times the molar mass, which is 24.3 grams per mole. Okay, mole cancels out. Therefore, 88.1 times 24.3 will give us 2,141 grams. Next example, you're asked how many moles are in 9.8 grams of calcium. So the first step that you have to do is check what is the molar mass of calcium in the periodic table. Calcium has a molar mass of 40.1 grams per mole. So therefore, the formula in finding moles would be equal to the grams, which is 9.8 grams, over 40.1 grams per mole. So grams cancels out. 9.8 grams divided by 40.1 grams will give us 0 0.24 moles. Let's take a few more examples. How many grams are in 4.5 moles of sodium fluoride? NAF. So first step, find the molar mass of Na and F. So sodium is 23, fluorine is 19. So you add 23 and 19, you will have 42. So therefore, to find the mass or grams would be mass is equal to 4.5 moles times 42 grams per mole moles cancel therefore 4.5 times 42 will give us 189 grams the next example you're asked how many moles are in 68 grams of copper 2 hydroxide so first thing again the first step is to find the molar mass of copper 2 hydroxide so copper would be 63.5 Oxygen here will be 2, so 2 times 16, which is 32. And then hydrogen again is also 2, so 2 times 1, that will be 2. So 63.5 plus 32 plus 2 will give us the molar mass of copper 2 hydroxide, which is 
97.5. Therefore, to find the moles, moles would be grams over molar mass. So 68 grams divided by 97.5 grams per mole. So 68 divided by 97 grams cancels out. You have 0 0.7 moles. The last two examples that we have. How many moles are present in 34 grams of copper 2 hydroxide? Again, copper 2 hydroxide, if you can still remember from the previous question, the copper 2 hydroxide has a molar mass of 97.5 grams per mole. Therefore, to find the moles, it will be 34 grams divided by 97.5 grams per mole. Grams cancel, 34 divided by 97.5 you'll have 0 0.35 moles. The last example, how many grams are there in 3.4 times 10 to the power 24 molecules of NH3? Now, since we're given molecules here, we will be using Avogadro's number to find the number of moles. So the number of moles would be the given, which is 3.4 times 10 to the power of 24 molecules divided by the Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 molecules per mole. So molecules, molecules cancel 3.4 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 would be 5.65 moles. Now since we are only asked for grams Therefore, mass would be equal to 5.65 times the molar mass of NH3, which is 17 grams per mole. 17. So, 5.65 times 17, you will have 96 